Hi, my name is Shannon Crawford. And I'm Molly Sickles. And welcome to Clark Math Methods. Today, we have just received some breaking news that a new method has come to Clark. It is called the box method. Today, we will be showing you, showing you how to do 14 times 35 using the box method. First, we'll tell you how to set it up. So you draw a box here, or a rectangle, whichever, and then you make it look like kind of like a square window. So you have four squares. And then you, you make a line out here, and then you can make a line out here. And then you kind of divide this box in half, but make sure the line keeps going. And then you box. And then you divide these two boxes in half and make sure this is the longest line. And then you do the same thing for this box and make the line longer. And make sure that your lines are always on the left side of your box or else it just won't work. Okay, and so now you're gonna go ahead and draw the imaginary lines from the top, from the one that goes vertically and you're just gonna draw some of that, and <laughs> you're gonna draw one that goes horizontally, and so it goes like that. And you so can always erase them later. Mm -hmm. These are your imaginary lines. They are not part of the diagram. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and have your math problem. Ours is 14 times 35. So since we have a two-digit number by two-digit two number, we're gonna have four boxes here. So the first one, or if you have it written like this is going to be the top one. You're going to have that be the one on the top of the box. So your imaginary line there is just so that you basically split the number in half. So it would be like this is one number, and this is one number, or like that. So the one is the tens place. So if the one is on the tens place, that's going to go on the left side. And the one digit is going to go on the right side. So what is in the tens number line, or the tens digit? One. The one. So you're, you're going to put that on the left side, which would be this side of the imaginary line. And then on the ones digit, which is going to be on the right side of it, you're going to have a four. And then you want to do the same thing for 35. So the 35 the tens digit number is the third. So you're gonna put that on the top of the imaginary line. And the one digit number is a five, so you're gonna put that on the bottom. But make sure that the, your imaginary line is the one, is the first two lines that you made, the one that cuts it in fourths, okay? And now you're gonna go ahead and start multiplying. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your one and your five and you wanna drag your fingers until you go straight. So until you meet them up together. So if you take your five and you go to the farthest one, and you take your one and you go straight down to the bottom, you're gonna get this box. So if you take five times one, you're gonna get five. So your five is in the ones place. And since there is no tens digit, you're gonna go ahead and put a zero there. And so this is gonna be the ones digit box, and this is gonna be the tens place box, or the triangle. So the five is gonna go on the bottom and you're gonna have a zero up at the top. If, um, if there's not a number in one of the boxes or like a zero, you need to put a zero there because it will help you later on. Then you're going to go ahead and do um, one times three. So if you drag them across, you're gonna get this one, the top left corner. So three times one equals what, Molly? Three. So you have your three and the one digit and the zero and the tens. So you're, you're gonna go ahead and put a three and the bottom triangle and the zero and the ones. Now you're gonna do four times five and what does that equal, Molly? 20. So you put a two in the tens digit, which would be the top, and a zero in the bottom. And then you take four times three and that equals 12. So you're gonna put a one in the top and a two in the bottom. Now what you're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and drag them down. So if you just, so these don't even matter anymore, okay? 
so you can cross those off if it helps you so so that you don't get confused so now what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and slide them down or as some people like to call it sliding down the mountain so um, this if this is the mountain and the zero sliding down so you're going to put a zero at the bottom in between the two lines now what you're going to do is you're going to go move on to the next one so you don't have to worry about this one or these ones and then you have to add them if there's more than one digit or if there's more than one number. So 2 plus 2 equals 4 plus 5, and that equals 9. So you're going to put a 9 at the bottom. Now, if there was a two-digit number that these equal to, say 11, you'd put a 1 down here and carry the 1 up here. But that's not um, how it went on this problem. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and do the next one. 1 times 3, or 1 plus 3, make sure that you add them, that equals 4, plus 0, it so equals 4, and then you're going to go ahead and do the last one, which would be the top one, and that equals 0. So what we got for this problem was 490. Now you always want to check your problem to make sure you, you have the right answer, and we could use dividing. Usually we would use dividing to check a multiplication problem, but when we're using the box method, we could just use multiplication. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 35 times 14, the numbers we started with. So what's five times four, Jenna? 20. So put the zero down there and carry the two. What's three times four? 12. Plus two, 14. So you put 14 down there and cross this off because you don't need it anymore. Now since you're starting with a 10, you put a 0 down here. And what's 1 times 5, Jenna? 5. So you put the 5 down there. And what's 1 times 3? Three? 3. So you put the 3 there. And now add them together. And your answer should match up. And if they don't match up, you, you either did something wrong on this type of problem or on this type of problem. So it's good to go ahead and do both of them again to make sure that they match up. And make sure you keep all your work. Like if, if you're doing it on a whiteboard, make sure you have all your work still on the board before you check, check it. And that's Clark method or Clark Math method news for today. Stay tuned for more.